Hey, hey guys. We're here on a nice brisk Sunday in January. I thought I would just pop in, go live, have a bit of a Sunday hangout, a chat. You know, see how everyone's doing these days. So, uh, how are y'all doing out there? You know, I'm doing pretty good. Just worked all weekend, got the next couple days off. So, figure, you know, why not? This is my Friday afternoon eve, as they say. So, I figure why not hop on, see you guys. I'm just broadcasting from my phone, so uh, let me know if the audio is okay. Uh, if not, I got some earbuds with a microphone I could pop in if needed. See, we got three people watching already. Awesome. Hey guys, how you doing? Who do we have out there? Just wait for to see if some comments come up here. I don't have a separate device for once to read comments on, so this is all just trial error. Young Andre, hey Ashley, how you doing? Nice to see you catch us live, finally. Well, me anyways. I don't know what Richie's up to today. I haven't talked to him. Good to see you. Good to see you. Audio's okay, I hope. So I figured, yeah, come on here. Do a little chat. See what you guys are up to. What you guys want to talk about. Uh, man, last night I watched our Metal Stages podcast with uh, Tone King on. That was awesome. That was really good. Awesome. Sounds good. Awesome. So yeah, I might, I figure I'll show off a couple of things that I have kicking about, you know, if certain topics come up. Uh, if R2, R3 locking nut happens to pop in, I happen to have my Telecaster here I was telling him about last night, so we can take a look at that. And I got some, a couple pedals and talk about repairs and stuff like that. So yeah. So what do you guys want to talk about? How's your day been? How's your weekend been if you've had the whole weekend off? I'm just curious. And while you guys are thinking of that, let's see here. Hey, Adam, how's it going? Congrats on the show last night, man. It was awesome. Really loved it. I didn't have any questions really to type in there. Hey, Jim Gidry, how you doing? Just saying, yeah, it was an awesome show. You guys were asking all the right questions. When I went to think of something, I get halfway through typing a question, boom, you guys were already asking it. So yeah, it was really cool, laid back. A lot of fun, a lot of fun. And uh, I think you guys will get a few more followers out of that. You know, it was a good time for sure. You, know, you went a little longer than usual, but that just told me you guys were having fun. Saying hey to each other there. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, it was nice chatting with you earlier today, Jim. Glad you could pop in. Uh, I don't know if the football game's over or not. I heard some score update when I was at the gas station on the way home. So, I wonder what you guys would want to see here. I feel kind of odd without a guitar in my hand. Oh, halftime. Okay. Fair enough, Jim. Fair enough. Fair enough. I think I'll have a little sip of the conversation lubrication first. Oh yeah. Think about getting rid of the PV Valve King for a Blues Deluxe. Thoughts? Well, are you talking the Tweed Blues Deluxe reissue? Um, was it 40 watts single 112? Because if that's the case, well, I've been gigging with one of those for a year now, so I'm a little biased. I love it. Um, just the amp on its own. Can't get a lot of breakup out of it. Well, you can get a bit of breakup, but you know, not distorted by any stretch of the means. But man, it takes pedal so well. Tons of headroom. I just run it on the clean channel and run my pedal board into it. I love it, you know. Richie can bring out one of his 410 half stacks, and I have no problem keeping up with them. Definitely. And bang for the buck. Great little lamp. Great little lamp. And I don't have to lug a half stack around, and I still have nice stage volume. So I'm happy. I would. I can't recommend it enough. Did you try, by the way, did you try uh, lubricating or filing the nut at all on your telly to see if that helps for that big bend, holding tune a little bit better? curious on that but 
bell came away. It was too much power, massive. Yeah. The half set, yeah, exactly. Too much to drag around. And every gig, you're that little bit older and a little bit more tired at the end of the night. Yeah, I do not miss not dragging a half stack around everywhere. I do not miss that at all. I will say that. I'll do it on occasion, like if we play outdoors or something like that, and they don't have a quality PA to mic everything up, or if I know it's going to be noisy stage volume, again, outside especially, I, I do like running through a half stack outside. There's something about standing in front of it and feeling it, shaking your pant legs, and yeah, there's something really cool about that. Gee, strings, okay. Oh, well, there we go. Maybe it was just something with the string. Oh, who do we have here? Mystery. Is that Bruce? Let me get to my PC. Well, yeah, you take your time, buddy. You know, do what you can. Like I said, just pop on, have a chat, see how you guys are doing. Now, Adam, you said something about vape lady going to dinner. I assume that would be your significant other. Just assume. So I remember you talking, you have kids and such around, so I assume there's one of them lady folk around as well. So yeah, well, well, I'm thinking, so basically anything I show here, I'll probably end up showing on our show, Connects with Guitars, down the road too, because, you know, we need content, and both of us don't have a ton of gear, so, <laughs> figure what the hell, but, uh, yeah, I think I'm going to grab my telly, because I just feel weird not having a guitar in my hand. Watch a bunch of people probably ask questions while my back's turned. Oh well. If you did and I didn't see it, well, ask me again. So this was um this became my main gigging guitar. Oh, my vape dinner lady brand. Not familiar with that one. Not familiar with that one. Me and my wine buzz are here. Nice. Well. Here's to you, and you, I'll let you decide what's in there. Yeah, that's just water. Sure, let's go with that. Lemon tart. Mmm. You know, Richie would love that. He's all about the lemon vape. I will say that. Oh, Tone Bolts is here? Awesome, awesome. So, yeah, uh, this guitar became my gigging guitar. Uh, hey, Bruce, I think. Bruce. <laughs> Uh, when I retired my 67 telly, which you guys, if you had tuned into our last show, uh, I showed that one on the air there. So yeah, I picked this up, uh, nice little made in Mexico telecaster. Hey, Jane James. So uh, this has the, move the camera down. All right. Well. I'm just going with basically what I can see in here, but I will do this as well. So you got uh, dual black top humbuckers with a strat style stop tail bridge. It also has coil tap. So I'll use either the, basically the two chrome rails are the ones that are always active no matter what setting. And something that I really like, yes, a belly cut. So it's not going to show up on camera too well. Why? Because it's a white guitar with a reflection. Oh, thanks, Jim. So um, fretboard, possibly rosewood, although it is a bit on the dark side. And so, like, I keep it well oiled. So it was lighter, obviously, when it, I let it dry out a bit because I started playing other guitars for a while this kind of went down for a while I was playing Les Paul style guitars because I had a few of them and then back to Tele Country again so yeah it's due for a string chain I tried those uh elixir strings don't ask me which webbing on them because I was having a problem where like I was playing at that time about through five six different guitars at any given time and I got sick of Restring the guitar, play it for 20 minutes, put it down, and then start playing other guitars and stuff. And by the time I'd go back to any particular guitar, the strings were dead again. So I was constantly putting new strings on stuff. And so I thought, hey, if I got coded strings, they might be able to handle, like, they all sit in cases, but 
Elixirs run the frets. I would disagree, Jaden, unless it's something chemical wise, because that coating, it, no matter what they do, this is third gen coating, it still flakes off. Well, more down here for me because I have a tendency to do a lot of pick slides too. Yeah, well, I'm product of the 80s, so I like my pick slides. But uh, I don't know, the fret, frets, I uh, polished them up three, four months ago and they're still perfect, so. I don't know. Like, they seem to be like, it's due for a strain change again, though, because they are starting to die a bit, so. You ruin elixirs, Adam? Yeah, it, I don't think it's worth, like, I think they cost, what, two and a half times as much as regular strings. So I figured if I could get two and a half times the playtime out of them, then they pay for themselves, and they didn't. Clear now. Awesome. Unfortunately, I don't really have anything I can plug this into. I do have a uh, first generation PV Classic back there, but it needs the pots really need. Oh, okay. There you go. It, it's probably me moving around too much. Coating seems to fray above the frets. Yeah, that's true, Adam. It, any friction, it's just, it doesn't take much to rub the stuff off, I found. So, yeah, I, I have an amp back there, but. Yeah, mo half the pots aren't working. Richie took a look at it. It looks like I'm. It needs some pots replaced. Well, the thing is, forty years old, so still sounds kind of nice, though. I will say that it does still sound nice. Oh, look at this! Five people watching. Four thumbs up. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Hey, dry heat, four eighty. How is it in the big Arizona? We're just hanging out, talking about this and that. Everyone saying hi to dry heat. That's nice. nice and friendly. So I assume, Ashley, you saw the Tom Petty news the last few days. I'm not going to get into it too much. Read whatever you want to read about it. But who knew he had a fractured hip when we saw him play? That's crazy. He put on a phenomenal show. Just touch the screen and they'll reappear. Has anyone happened to see some of the YouTube footage? Yes, I watched a bunch of the Vinnie Vincent stuff. Uh, Joe, Joe Wentz in the house. Um, I caught the Eddie Trunk interview yesterday because I figured it would be talked about during Pixie's live show or um, our Metal Stage podcast. I figured if they touch on it, I wanted to be in the know. And then I watched today from obviously the same expo uh, I don't know, five minutes of him just talking before he started playing acoustically. Um, he sounds good. He sounds grounded. I don't, I don't know if he is transforming, transferring, transitioning. That's the correct term, I guess. But he's always looked rather feminine. I was thinking about that today. So he is rather pudgy. And as such, he does have breasts. I will say that, but I can't tell if they're female breasts or just a set of good old set of moves. Yeah, good to see Sinner in the house. Tom Petty was one tough SOB. You're right there, Adam. A bunch of us went up to see him in Toronto this year, and even with a high ticket price, it was worth it in many ways. Hello from the over. I figured you were dry working today, Joe. Good to see. That means good weather. Just be safe and... Carry on, listen away, I guess. Our middle stage saying hello to everyone. Good to see, good to see. Yeah, totally worth And in the opener, I want to say Peter Wolf, something Wolf, David Wolf, singer from Jay Giles' band. He opened the show and his band was phenomenal. I had, Richie and I were talking about that. During, I was like, these guys are really good. And then they started mentioning who they were and it was basically a bunch of session players one guy the bass player is in the jazz hall of fame so if they can damn if you're in the jazz hall of fame as a bass player you'll have no problem playing rock and roll peter wolf you think yeah something like that he was great great you know should have been joe walsh but what can we do right 
but the Eagles had a couple of gigs that week, so Joe couldn't do that leg of the tour, so they brought in Wolf to open. Oops, that's a wrong note. So since we have a few uh, metal heads in the house, um, I posted a couple videos for Throwback Thursday last week of a former band I played in, which was, yeah, just a tad heavier than what I do these days. And I used to play through a solid state half stack, but on the clean channel. And guys would always ask me, how do I got a nice saturated tone with basically just running a clean solid state amp? And it was all pedal based and... I found one pedal that if you want that heavy saturated sound, and I still bring it out once in a while, although I really don't recommend it with single coils. Oh, thanks, Bruce. Thanks very much. So yeah, um, I came across one of these little pedals and they can be a finicky bastard, but if you dial them in correctly, I swear by this. You want that heavy, saturated, you know, triple rectifier sound right here. Love to play through this. Set it and forget it. There's my heavy tone. Still use it once in a while. Just, um, I used it a bit in a band last year. It was one of those use it once a night. We were actually doing a cover of, oh, terrible, Cranberry Zombie. And we're not a heavy band, but I wanted that... Big chug chug. How much do one of those run? Ah, uh, that's a good question, Bruce. Um, hmm. I want to say about a hundred and a half Canadian. Off the top of my head, I should know this. I was looking at one in the display shelf just the other day when I was at Arden's. Uh, isn't that terrible? Yeah, I think they're about a hundred and a half. I picked it up uh, at a pawn shop with a power supply for sixty bucks, and I thought. Geez, that's a steal, because that's worth 60 bucks on its own used, as far as I'm concerned. Picked it up, took it up, picked up my pedal board on the uh, way through town, went over to Richie's place, we dialed it in in no time, and he's like, yeah, yeah, that's your heavy tone right there, buddy. And I use that, like, we, the old band, if you haven't checked the videos, um, kind of in the Godsmack vein, um, I didn't realize that, because I, nothing against Godsmack, I've never got into them. And I think I was playing with the band for almost a year. And then I heard a Godsmack song on the radio and I was like, wow, they sound like us. And then at the end of the song, they said who it was. And I was on my way over to Richie's place and I walked in the door. I said, why didn't you tell me I play in a Godsmack style band? He goes, I figured you knew that. I was like, nope, nope, sorry. Didn't know that. It was cool. Low slung Les Paul drop C tuning with Full bore metal into a half stack. Right on. So do you guys have any questions, comments, anything uh, you want to know, see, um, anything repair related? I've been putting off a bunch of repairs, so I've been in that kind of frame of mind right now, trying to locate tools so I can do the job right. And we'll just see what happens. If not, Richie can always fix it up. Uh, if you caught the last show, he kind of went over his background as far as repair work. He, he's a good little captain. I know Ashley's been bouncing stuff off him probably, what, since you started playing? As far as, what should I do about this and that? Godsmack does a great cover of Good Times Bad. I'll have to check that out. I'll have to check that out. I could see that. I always, I love when bands do covers. I'll be honest. I just love when bands do covers because... And as such, with uh, our current band, the Honey Badger Outfit, we like to do covers of covers. So like ELO's Do Ya, we don't say we do ELO's Do Ya. We do Ace Frehley's version of Do Ya. How do you like your new Go Mixer, Ben? Love it. We used it last Thursday night. Um, I kind of regret leaving it at Richie's place. Otherwise, I'd be using it today and plugging something into it because I've got preamps and stuff I could use, so... Since I was nine. Yeah, exactly. And if anyone doesn't know Young Outdoors there, that's actually Richie's cousin Ashley, who's a hell of a guitar player herself. Got a band in out Port Colburn area. 
Yeah, great unit. And what, 140 Canadian, Adam? Uh, you know, I had to stop at the Evil Empire to pick it up. And no, Joe, uh, I know you're listening. Uh, I did not hear the Imperial theme music as I walked through the sliding doors, although I was fully expecting it at any time, you know. Yeah, Port Colburn. Cool. Um, we may be swinging by for a quick visit, Ashley, in, I want to say, June. It looks like right now we're sitting at 50-50 of whether or not we're going to Gearfest uh, Sweetwater. Uh, some of the guys on here I was talking with, like Bruce last night, we were talking about going to Gearfest in Fort Wayne, Indiana. And we're going to shoot a bunch of stuff, go live from there, and uh, I think it'll be a blast. So, Richie seemed excited, so... But as we know, he's getting married this year, so... Hey, Potter's in the house. He's made it home from getting the dinnertime vittles. Well, to you, Potter. To you, Potter. Hey, R2, R3. No problem. Um, I'll show it again, because it's right here. I have that telly. For sure, actually. I think it's mid-June. I got a... I'm waiting till later this week to book the weekend off. I may even book the Friday and the Monday around it off so we could do most of the driving on Friday and then uh, have lots of time, if he's able to get time off and stuff too. So our two or three, we were talking about my Mexican telly last night. Here it is, brother. Nice little glossy with the black logo. With a belly cut. Have you not seen this one, Potter? Oh, then again, every time we hung out, I usually show up with Les Paul, don't I? Ah, that's right. Yeah, well, go figure. You can't recall, Potter. Like, usually when we're hanging out, we're having a good time. So, yeah, 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 yeah. A little of this, a little of that. Potter there, uh, he's down in Nova Scotia, as everyone knows, I'm in Ontario. Potter here may have tracked me down a new Git Fiddle. Let me know if that goes through, and of course, for the love of God, I hope you're going to pick it up and you could actually strum a few chords, just to make sure she's not a basket case. She doesn't have to be perfect. You know I can dial it in from there. Thank you very much. I sent Richie that picture last night. He's like, is that the one on the East Coast? Yes. Oh, my God. I was like, yeah, we're working on it, buddy. So hopefully, yes, I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, what was it? Uh, Gretsch Electromatic. Maybe coming. It's in Moncton. Okay. I didn't realize it was that far. I just saw it, and you know me. I go, ooh, picture, guitar, party. Yes, I want so, some money freed up. I'm not taking my annual vacation down south this year. However, it looks like I may be headed to Sweetwater and uh, possibly, a, I'm hoping, anyways, a trip down to Nova Scotia at some point because I want to go hang out with my man Potter, check out his new place that he and Sarah have. Beautiful down. I've seen the pictures. It, oh, it's gorgeous. Real treasure. Yeah, Again, guys talking about last night's show. Yeah, it was good. Right on, Potter. Oh, speaking of Potter, he was nice enough to give me this a while back. And I was so happy I gave him a big muff pedal back that I wasn't using. I go through big muffs like crazy. Yeah, I pick one up and sell it and pick one up, sell it. Richie does the same thing. So Potter was nice enough to give me this Duncan 59. Yes, I know, I still haven't put it in. God, he was still living in Ontario when he gave it to me. Yes, I haven't got around to put it in yet. I think it's gonna go in, well, you know the guitar, the Epi Les Paul that I think I brought by when, just before you moved. Yeah, November, well, there we go. Hey. I, I can't find any of my tools and stuff, the re renovations here, so we'll figure it out somehow, some way. 
But yeah, Duncan 59's going in something. I know that. I can't let that go to waste. That's a beautiful little pickup. I've always wanted to try one out. I, it is coil tappable. So I was thinking about putting it in the tally. Excuse me, here. But then I realized that Duncan 59 is, you know, basically a PAF. So it's probably going to put out 7, 7.5K. Whereas these pickups put out 12K, I think 12, 12.5K. So if you like a high gain pickup, again, great, great guitar for that. I can get so many tones out of that thing. And I like the hot pickups even in the single coil. And it's a little more 50s healthy style in that way. It's a little sharper, brighter. Uh, I do find I have to roll back the tone on it from time to time just because it can get a little shrill. But I like throwing in a little chicken pick and licks here and there in songs. So it really cuts through like that. I really like it. So yeah, that's the story on that. Again, thanks Potter. It will be going in something. I hope you're enjoying that big muff. Um, it did, it, it's not about, it's a, what was it? A nano series big muff. Fortunately, the music store I deal with a lot, they are an electro harmonics dealer. And so they give me a bit of a price break and those nano series made. For the most part, most of that line, they're pretty damn good. Some of them you do need to move up to the Neo series to get a little bit more versatility out of them. But I think I bought most of the Nano series at one time or another over the last couple of years. Just pick them up, throw them on the pedal board for a month. If I like it, I like it. If I don't, move on to something else. And always, there's never enough room on the pedal board to keep them all. That's for sure. Who doesn't enjoy a big mom? That's a good question, Dry Heat. I'm going to say, I don't know, nobody? That's the way to do it. But I try. However, I figure in the next little while, I'm going, we're going to do a giveaway on the Thursday night show for a variety of reasons. One, as a thank you to everyone. Uh, where to go? And two, because neither of us can really use such a beast as this. But I picked this up a while ago. Um, not my thing. You know, you guys have heard, I'm kind of a rockabilly guy by heart. I have no use for this. I got the full bore metal. It was a better pedal. I don't have any use for it. So I figure I'm just going to give it away. Uh, basically, if you want to enter, go on any of our live broadcasts, you know, after the fact, so you can comment and just write in the comments, I want the death metal pedal, or I want the pedal or something to that effect. So it'll flag it for me. And I'll just throw the names in a hat, draw a name after a few weeks and send it on out. Um, don't know the age of the pedal. I want to say the pedal's got to be at least 10 years old. It should build a quality piece of kit, I'll tell you that much. It is robust. It's heavy. It's a very heavy pedal. Holy crap, 10 people watching. Awesome. 10 thumbs up. Thanks, guys. Whoops. Oh, as soon as I said I am dropped down to nine. Well, maybe we're lucky that's just Joe Wentz driving through a tunnel or something. He lost reception for a moment. Anyway, I appreciate everyone tuning in. You know, this is just a spur of the moment thing. I was kind of uh, thinking at work. Uh, is that from Digitech? Yes, it is, R2, R3. Uh, yeah, if anyone's interested, it it's yours. Uh, you know, it, it's kind of dusty, you know. Uh, it seems I picked it up secondhand. I don't think the guy who had it before me used it a whole lot. Uh, we picked up a Frontman 212 amp and that pedal off him. He basically threw in the pedal because he was selling all of his gear. And so we picked that up and my dad wanted the amp at the time, just to noodle around on. And it was a deal. Actually, I think we went up to pick up some, no, actually we didn't go up for the amp. Well, we drove up, uh, it was up to Barry to pick up a big lot of die cast cars. We were selling a lot of those die cast cars online, like on Kijiji and stuff like that, which if you don't know, Kijiji is like Craigslist. Uh, so we went up to pick up these diecast cars, and while we we're there, the amp was in. He goes, "Hey, you don't happen to know anybody that wants an amp?" And we're like, "Oh yeah, well, what do you want for?" So we got it for a decent price, so we picked it up. I ended up gigging with that amp for a while. Dad noodled around on it for a few years, 
during band practice when you're in more enclosed area obviously sounds great on your own but it didn't quite cut through the mix live because we you have every band i've ever played in it's a fair amount of stage volume and uh it just yeah and i was playing with richie i want to say last year i guess it was and he says i don't want to be that guy but you need a tube amp dude everyone else is running to, you need a tube but yeah, on its own, great. And uh, actually, if you watch, uh, what's the show, Live from Daryl's House, uh, the episode with Joe Walsh, Joe Walsh is playing through the Frontman 212. And at that time, I was thinking about getting rid of it. And I'm like, well, if... Oh, did we, did we lose something? Rest in peace, Ben's live feed. Show us I'm still live. I'll just wait for the comments there. If somebody else comments, I can always stop it and start it again. Uh oh, we're looking, Ben, or is it losing? I'm in and out lagging a bit. Oh, and I'm back. Huh. Interesting. I don't know what's going on. I've seen before when that happens, it, it might be okay on the replay, but I'm not too sure on that. So. Weird. Very weird. Then again, I am across... So yeah, uh, Frontman 212, Death Metal. Yeah, Frontman 212's gone down the road. I did like the tune. Oh, I'm losing out too. Hmm, that is weird. Hmm. Well, I wasn't planning on going to hold my longer than this, but we'll see how it goes. Um, in a few minutes, if I see a few more comments that it's dropping, then I might just end it and hope for the best. Didn't have a whole lot else to say or show off anyhow. This is just kind of a spur of the moment thing, hanging out. You guys have any questions or anything? Anything you want to see? Uh, if you're watching Joe Wentz's show last week, let us know where and when. We'll give you a shout out, Ashley. Like uh, if you're playing in the Niagara Falls area, Adam EVH, that's on here. Uh, he's in that area and maybe he'll come down and check you guys out. Who knows? Support live music, that's what I say. And that's not just because we're gigging musicians. Speedwitch, uh, how many of the people on here are out there playing or you're like bedroom players starting out? I'm just curious. I know Potter's getting back into it after not playing for a while. Ashley's obviously getting back into gigging, it's good to know. Unfortunately, I got six people watching, so I. I could probably guess the six that are watching. I know what Joe's up to and Joe's driving. So Joe, you don't need to tell me that you were gigging and now, you know, you're just a regular Joe, as they say. Kingsway Lanes, Welland, March 31st. Kingsway Lanes and Welland, March 31st. For those that are watching on the replay, right on. That's awesome. So I'm guessing the connection must be improved a bit now because I'm seeing the comments fairly quick and no one's complaining about it. So who knows? We'll see how it goes. Nice way I could get down to the East Coast for a show. Yeah. You set it up, Potter. If they pay enough, we'll drive that far. It is, what, 15 hours? Parker's in Port Colburn, 8 p.m., April 21st. And uh, yes, I'm back to clear. Awesome. So yes, Bent Fender, which is a great name for a band. Love that name. Love that name. I don't know what it reminds It reminds me of something I can never think of what it reminds me of, but that's what I, maybe that's why I like it. <clears throat> and yeah, and it's rubber on the bottom. So it, you know, it doesn't slide around too badly. But it's a great little thing. I was doing a bunch of fret polishing at the time because I realized none of my guitars had had the frets polished in a few years. I know. Um, but none really needed a fret job per se. 
and I started watching uh, YouTube videos, uh, Dave's World of Fun stuff, and uh, Widesso's uh, guitar mods, how-to videos, and I thought, hey, I could do that. So, you know, I picked up the, you know, masking tape, some uh, four-knot steel wool, and I have some high-grit sandpaper that I've used as well. This is a 1500 grit sandpaper, which is crazy. Um, I use that on necks as well, although I find it's so fine that it doesn't so much give you that satin finish on the neck, it'll actually polish out the neck as much as anything else. Players need to at least change their own strings. That's true dry heat, unless you have a tech, which we all wish we had a tech. That way you, you know, you just show up at gigs and play, you don't have to set up anything, just kind of, you know, walk on side stage and later stand there with your guitar ready, put strap over you. You walk out and do your thing. That'd be amazing. Uh, if you want to know actually what type of products I use, you know, you can contact me anytime. Playing for rehab after stroke. Oop. All right, I tried touching the screen, screen to bring the comment back up. But okay, like, I think I read it right. Like you're using playing for therapy. And Excellent idea. I agree. I had a buddy that has had a stroke and uh, it took him a while, but he really found it did help. And especially uh, like me, he's a left-handed guy, but he plays right-handed, which if you're a lefty, that's the way to go. Why not use your dominant hand for all the intricate fretwork and stuff like that? Since most people just play with picks anyhow, it's not like you need the intricacy of finger picking. But he found, yeah, it really helped, you know, if nothing else, strengthen his left hand and all his muscles and stuff. And it took him a while, and but slowly it came back and just as good as he was prior, as far as I know. Good to see, good to see. Yeah, playing guitar for therapy. Man, it's therapeutic for so many reasons, really. Let's be honest. You know, whether you had a bad day at work, right up to a stroke. You know, why not? Just depends on the type of music you want to play and Which I find you know, you can change your mood Sort of like they always say you only hear a certain song on the radio well play a certain song it'll take you to a certain place Anybody else have any questions or anything um, and I do agree. Yeah, we have to have people doing their own basic stuff, like anybody can do this stuff, folks. You know, especially in the day of YouTube. You know, intonation, piece of cake, really. You know, one screw. I usually use just one of those uh, Snark tuners. Uh, I like it just because it has so many different degrees and stuff like that. It's easy to see. And I'll just clamp that on and, you know, hit an open string. Fret it at 12th fret. Make sure that needle's the exact same spot for both, and away you go. Which I am actually going to be doing an upgrade on this in the near future. This has the original, oh, here we go, vintage style saddles. If you can see, I don't like them, I'll be honest. I find these tops just rip my hand up, so fierce, because the threaded rod sticks out further on the stamp style. So you kind of get an angle there. Uh, so I'm replacing them with modern saddles. They should be in this week. So maybe, maybe we shoot a little video on doing that just for something to do. That should be fun. Uh, Richie's got a set of saddles coming in as well. Uh, we're doing the four-way selector switch in the 71 Tele this week or next week. Toyed with the idea of putting a Bigsby on your telly. Yeah, yeah. Why not? Um, if I was going to put a Bigsby on a telly, it would be, no offense, something like what you have, you know, like a modern player or something offshore Mexican. You know, I wouldn't carve up an American telly to modify it enough for the Bigsby. I just couldn't do it. And look, I just buy an American with a big speed. But I think a big speed on your telly, especially uh, you saw one P90 in it. Yeah, R2R3, I have calluses because of those sounds. I know, they, 
and I've gigged a lot on this thing, and they're still just as sharp. And you know, you can file them down, but uh, what's the point? It's easier just to put modern saddles that are that much thicker. No, never. <laughs> yeah, yeah, throw it on yours. Because you got what? A P90 and Pumbucker, which is a cool little combo using both those. I'll throw the Bigsby in there and probably get some uh, nice Rockabilly Gretchy type stuff with that, using that P90 with that Bigsby. Because I find Bigsby's, the own, they are their own unique trim as far as uh, use based on how sensitive or not sensitive they are. But yeah, wow, that, that'd be an interesting little build. If you do it, let us know. Let us know. We'd be curious. Uh, I think everyone would be curious to check it out. Which, uh, as you could tell by Ashley's screen name, Young Outdoors. If you're into outdoors, check out her channel. Check out her Instagram, too. She puts up some really cool stuff. I'm a little bit more of an inside dweller myself. Because that's where the guitars are most of the time. Ooh. Ooh. It's been out of the freezer for a while. Oh, you're very welcome, Ashley. Always like hanging with you, jamming and such. So what do we go out here? We're going about 45 minutes. That's not too shabby. Maybe we'll go as up to an, the hour and then we'll call it a day. I should have something to eat since I'm drinking Mountain Kool-Aid on an empty stomach. I'm sure that's a good idea. But I'm not driving, so who cares? So yeah, anybody have any other questions, comments? Um, actually, I got most of my kind of repair stuff here. I just realized, so. Baby duty. Okay. Have a good one, Ashley. Have a good one. I swear, it's every time I look away is when the comment comes up. Murphy's Law, right? That's why. I... Next time I'll have my laptop over here as well. So it'll be a little easier to keep up on the chat. So I do apologize if you guys have asked something or commented and I missed it. Uh, dry heat. I find you mentioned 12th fret harmonic. Yeah, but I find doing it that way, I don't find it's as accurate myself because uh, that works fine and amazing for intonation, I'd say fifth fret down, but I do a lot of fake slide work and stuff up in here and I found it, I want to have perfect intonation at the 12th fret, especially I'm doing, you know, stuff like that. Um, I just started doing the press down, but then again, I run a very low action, I, I, you know, as low as possible to the point where like uh, the 71 currently has a slight back bow in the neck and I actually kind of like it. Um, it doesn't buzz when you play it acoustically, but it's right there. Oh, okay, that's work related message. We don't need to discuss. I just realized that's not part of the chat. That's messenger popping down on me. Um, uh, but to each, you know, whatever works best for you. Like I am also rather heavy handed and uh, which is one of the reasons I, I might also replace the frets in this thing. Although they are pretty small, they're probably a medium fret. Just get rid of that message. There we go. Um, I like really small frets in guitars, smaller the better, like the vintage style frets. I, I find just because I am a bit of a heavy handed, heavy quarter and because I'll do a lot of fake slide runs up hitting a knee you know um, I put stuff out of tune just simple D chord you know, or an A chord I'll, I will put the guitar out of tune just I don't do it normally when I'm practicing but I find on stage I will put it out of tune so I, that's why I do the pressing down on the fifth fret but Again, what works for you? You know, personalize it. You know, that's the whole point. Personalize your guitar for what you're doing. Um, there's something I didn't cover on previous videos. I should say all the modifications that I am doing to the 71 Tele and what have been done 
Yes, bigger issue with jumbos. Yeah, very much so. Yeah, exactly. Um, I decided a few years ago I wanted to be a lazier player, if that makes sense. Why am I working so hard with jumbo frets where I got to adjust my pressure all the time? With small frets, thinner strings, um, just make the guitar as easy as possible to play so I don't have to work as hard. So I don't, my hands don't cramp up as much. I don't know why I'm looking back there. Oh yeah, vintage tellies. Yeah, I was going to just say, we do have all the original parts for those guitars. They're in bags around here somewhere. So don't think I'm, we're just, you know, me and my father. So second generation Coombs carving up vintage tellies just willy-nilly. We have the parts. I'm actually surprised, though, last week's show didn't cause a little more of a stir. I changed the title of the show after broadcast, just the fact that it says... 1967 Telecaster with EMGs. Yeah, I'm sure that, well, then again, maybe there's a lot of people that didn't click on that just because they're like, well, this guy's obviously doesn't know what he's talking about, but I figured I would get a bunch of these and stuff, but no, thankfully we didn't, so that's cool. Wow, 10 thumbs up, guys. Thanks so much. That's awesome. No, but you're for just a random Sunday chat. I'm guessing probably a few people are getting back to the football game and stuff like that. I heard there's a big game today, playoffs, maybe? Playoffs? I don't know. Whatever it is. I don't really pay attention to sports a whole lot anymore. Auto sports, yes. Uh, but not so much uh, stick and ball anymore. Not enough time, I think. You know, Sunday it can be race day, but the rest of the week it's all about the music. All about the music. Although I'm thinking I may start doing these all on Sundays, just, you know, Sunday afternoon, evening, pop on for a while, just do a Sunday hangout, you know, myself or whomever, because uh, you know, we got the Thursday night show, uh, we're going to be doing a lot of shooting on Saturdays to release during the week, so I haven't quite worked out the details on that schedule yet, but it uh, looks like we're going in this coming Saturday and probably review, I don't know, one or two guitars, an amp, Maybe a couple of pedals as well, build up some content, and then uh, we'll just probably, hopefully, we want to release three review videos a week, plus the weekly show, plus I may do this. Uh, I'm looking at doing some interviews with some people, see how that goes. And the interviews, I'm thinking we may do live as well, just because I, I want to have you folks involved. And it, we're going to do... Basically everything live on this channel, except for the gear reviews that we're just going to... Uh-oh, wine is gone. Uh, that's not good, Bruce. The wine is gone. That's not good. And it's still daylight out. That, that's, that's, but it's Sunday. It's all good. Anywho, yeah. So maybe, you know, not necessarily a video a day, but there will be several videos a week uh, to build up some content on the channel. Because I figure, you know... Nothing worse than, you know, when you find folks tunes in and there's only a couple of videos to watch and that's it. Like, sure, we're new, but we want to build it up as quickly as possible to where there is a fair amount of back catalog for you to check out and stuff like that. And, of course, comment, message me, uh, add me on Facebook, uh, just D Ben Coombs, Instagram, D Ben Coombs, Twitter, D Ben Coombs. Mess me about anything you guys want information on, you want something reviewed. You know, anything, you know, I'm an open book. I'm just a guy, but I've been doing this a long time and, uh, you know, figure why not spread the knowledge as much as possible. It's one of the reasons I launched this channel. I realized, you know, hanging out with you guys on other channels, uh, you know, in the chats and stuff like that. And I'd see questions, especially some of the more popular channels. The chat flies so by, flies by so fast that a lot of people will miss your questions. And if I know the answer, I figure why not type it in and, you know, so you don't have to wait. And quite often, you know, I've noticed, you know, not to brag, but the answers from the pros that we're watching or whomever generally have the same answer. So I'd like to think I know what I'm talking about and I just offer you my opinion. Take it or leave it. Uh, you know, I'm just a guy. So that's about it on that little rant. So, <laughs> so what do we got here? Five people watching. Anything else you guys want to see or talk about? Otherwise, I'm probably going to wrap this up soon. Grab myself some dinner. 
Maybe watch a little YouTube action. Check out some, uh, see if I can find some more pre nam stuff going on. And check out some more of that Vinnie Vincent stuff. That's uh, intriguing. I also heard uh, possibly, I haven't verified it by watching it, but I heard Vinnie Vincent may be getting back together with Kiss in the fall or something. So, interesting. So, which honestly, I'm surprised. Uh, like, if they're going to go with a former member who isn't Ace, go with Bruce Kulik. I would think he did the most volume of work other than Ace, but then again, are they even looking at anything post-makeup? Fun surprise you popping on, but yeah, um, I figured, I met, I put a post out on Facebook, um, I don't know what time it was, earlier this afternoon, and uh, like Sinner had seen it, and messaged, yeah, do it, and I just had to be chatting with uh, Jim Guidry. Yeah, Vinnie Vincent back with Kiss. So we will see. We shall see. I will tell you one thing, if they're going to wear any kind of costume, that boy needs to go on an exercise regimen. Let's just say. Uh, it'll be, yeah, yeah. Like, I realize nobody's, you know, in their 20s and 30s anymore, but still. Still have tons and tons of Kiss on cassette and CD. Yeah, me too, Bruce. Um, it's weird. As much as I hate Gene Simmons, I like Kiss. Or I like Ace. Ace was a huge influence on me uh, growing up. Like before, years before, you know, that time in your life, years before you ever actually pick up a guitar, but you know you're interested in it. And for two people, for me, it was Ace Frehley and Eddie Van Halen. Ace Frehley looked like he was having a blast. And every time I ever saw Eddie Van Halen play, he was smiling. And I thought, I want to do that. That looks like fun. And of course, you know, Ace is Ace. I ripped off a few of his licks, I'm not going to lie. Because he, he's just an old rockabilly player that played through Marshall Stack with Big Muff, you know. That's all that is. But it's great stuff, great stuff. Now I have, yeah, a bunch of cassettes, some vinyl. I don't know if I have any Kiss on CD. I may have, like, Double Platinum and Alive on CD. I can't remember exactly. Yeah, I was a big fan, big fan. Rock, proudly rocking my Kiss shirts at school and such. You know, they were they were one of the veteran bands at that time, right? It was interesting because uh, I found, I, at least personally, you know, in the mid '80s into the late '80s, bands that had came out prior to the hair metal, with the exception of the new wave of metal. Uh, being like the Judas Priests and Iron Maidens, they were still doing what they were doing. And Kiss had changed for the 80s, dropping the makeup, obviously, and stuff, and lineup changes. But they just kept going, whereas it seemed like Aerosmith, it was a comeback. Yeah, you know, And Steve Winwood came out with his solo career, and you had former members of the Eagles doing their thing. But it almost seemed more adult rock in that kind of soft rock pop vein. Even Van Halen, and I always thought that with Oh, You Wait One Too, you know... Uh, how do I know when it's love? With black and white. And I thought, this is very mature feeling. And I thought, well, you know, they've been around, you know, long enough that maybe they are starting to mellow out and mature. Nothing wrong with that. And then they came back with Pound Cake and went, oh, you know. Well, we had the vinyl solo each had a poster that fit together. Yes. And I think, Bruce, that was only the original pressing of those albums came with a poster, which would mean the first 50,000 units of each album sold would have come with a poster. Then they would have done a second pressing, which didn't include the poster, because I know I, too, have the solo albums, or most of them. I think I have three or four. But only my Ace came with a poster. And I bought that secondhand, and somebody bothered to put the poster in. And I probably still have that Ace Frilly poster somewhere. Because I just used the... I actually had it up on my wall with... Is if you put four of them together, it was the group shot, but on the back, it was just an individual poster, a car cartoon of Ace. I'm sure there's pictures of it online. Everything's online these days. See, yeah, I can remember stuff from the 70s and 80s, no problem, but ask me something about five minutes ago, yeah, no idea. I blame it on lifestyle. Let's just go with that. 
So, uh, yeah, I don't really know what else to talk about, so maybe we'll wrap things up. Uh, I want to thank everyone for tuning in. Definitely, uh, if you want your shout-out, say so, and then it'll come up on my screen, but I'm just going off the top of my head. We had Bruce in the house uh, out of Ohio, R2, R3, Locking Nut, uh, Jim Guidry, Sinner, Adam EVH, Ashley from Young Outdoors was here, Potter was on. Uh, who else? Am I forgetting anybody here? Oh, Dry Heat 480 was here. I think that was pretty much it. Anyone, that, I'm sure we had some other people on that maybe they didn't comment or I missed their comment, but uh, I appreciate y'all tuning in. You know, it's all content. You know, I appreciate those thumbs up. This is awesome, you know. The fact I'm looking right now and I have more thumbs up than viewers, so that's pretty kind of cool. More, to me, I always look at things half, glass half full. So, again, um, thanks for tuning in. Random Sunday chat. You know, maybe we'll do this on a weekly basis. You guys let me know, and uh, why not? So, have yourselves a good night, and uh, be safe. Take care. And Tone Bolts. Have a good night, guys.